Welcome to Sports Extra, your premium online sports show. I'm your host, Rubimbo Chakureka. Today I'm flying solo. It is a freaky Friday. That's what we love to call it here on Sports Extra because everybody's freaking out, running around, making sure that they get their fantasy football league teams in place and trying to make sure that the weekend is nice and set. So if you haven't joined the Sports Extra, a fantasy football league, I don't know which league you're playing in. We've got 200 US dollars that are up for grabs uh, for the winner for this season so it is going to be a long race it's only one match weekend already but we're going to be talking about that as well as well as giving you some tips as to who you most probably would want to have in your team for this weekend now looking locally we do have some news to talk about we've got some uh, footballing news as well as cricket news and then also going on to the international level we're also going to be talking about the big London Derby. That's Arsenal and Chelsea. But is it big after all? Who could be receiving a hiding in this one? Well, most likely Arsenal after that Brentford performance. But we are going to properly analyze all of that and make sure that we look at things from a proper perspective. And then as well, we are going to be looking at some rugby championship, uh, some fixtures that are going to be coming up this weekend. Who's going to play who and ultimately who we think is going to win. So, also, do like, do share, do comment, do subscribe our Facebook page and our Instagram handle. Uh, that is at Sports Extra Zim. But if you go onto our YouTube channel, it is a Sports Extra ZW. That's our YouTube channel. You can catch up with all of the content. We posted our latest extra sports feature episode that was with uh, head coach of the Zimbabwe under 20 junior Sables uh, rugby team that is uh, Sean D'Souza. So you can catch up with all of that content. It is now live, it is on Facebook and it's ready uh, for you. So we'll take a quick short break and then we get straight into all the action for today. So let's get straight into it and starting off on the local football scene and well this is a discussion that I've been having with others for a long time but maybe you can also comment and, and let us know what your thoughts are. Apparently Harare City and Motor Action Sports Club are in a bit of a wrangle that is over Cali's sports club. Now if you've ever been in the Eastley area you might remember the iconic Cali's um, uh, sports club which was Motor Action Sports Club home ground where they played their Premier League matches and also had a very significant success. But also at the same time, this was a club that was leased from Harare City Council as are many of the sports clubs that are, are dotted around the city. Now apparently there is an issue now where Harare City have now given the notice for Monte Action Sports Club to move out. Apparently a notice was given four months ago, that is according to the Harare City Council spokesperson, Michael Chidemi. But Motor Action Sports Club are now saying that regardless of the fact that we are defunct, in other words, the football club doesn't exist anymore, we put improvements there and we would love to be compensated for those improvements before we go. And they said we put in some terraces and even though we've been hosting some weddings and conferences, now we've also added some improvements to the clubhouse. But here's the challenge. Should Harare City Council be owning all of these stadiums? And it's a big debate that I would love to hear your thoughts and your comments on. And you can send us your comment uh, below this video. If Harare City Council owns these stadiums or owns these sports clubs, is it not already overburdening them with some of the responsibilities that they already have, which is taking care of the sewer works of the city, taking care of waterworks? for the city, taking care of refuse collection within the city, also even tarring some of the roads because we know that the emergency road rehabilitation program is not covering every single road in Zimbabwe. And so that will mean that local councils will have to take care of the other bit that government is not going to be taking care of. So should they still be owning these uh, clubs? I'm sure if they lease them out to those that are able to then it will make sense. But also coming back to this point, 
city council is saying we want to lease it to somebody else because we feel that this relationship or this tenure has ended. And you kind of feel that the city council are well within their right to choose who comes on to their property. It's more like a landlord who's dealing with their own tenant. If at any point they decide that they want to evict the person, of course it has to be done properly. Notices have to be given, eviction notices have to be released, and that will also help the process. And currently at the present moment, uh, I think there's going to be a wrangle, a legal wrangle uh, that is going to ensue and we are going to be keeping our eyes locked out on that one. But let's quickly move away from that one because that one is going to be a legal issue. Let's go on to some of the issues as well, uh, considering what is happening locally. Congratulations to Zimbabwe Cricket. The ICC gave them the go-ahead to host the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup qualifying tournament right here in Zimbabwe. Congratulations to you. And it shows that ICC is showing a whole lot of faith after that suspension, which came through when we weren't quite in the best of books. That was between the SRC and ZC, and then government came in and so on, and all those discussions. And finally, we were then reinstated after that entire wrangle uh, went down. And so this will be the third tournament that Zimbabwe will be hosting that is ICC-related. First and foremost, it was the disappointing one when we were looking to qualify for the 2019 World Cup and we lost at Harare Sports Club to the United Arab Emirates. And that meant we didn't go to our first World Cup ever since uh, we started having World Cups. <laughs> 83, 87, 91, 95, 99, 2003, 2007, 2011, 2015, and 2019 is the World Cup that we didn't go to. And so now because of qualification phases, it is going to continuously be a difficult road ahead. The second tournament that we hosted was when the women were playing in the ICC Women's Cricket World Cup qualifier, the Africa qualifier, where there had to be an African representative to then go ahead and participate in the world qualifying tournament. We won that tournament against Namibia, but unfortunately, that's when we got suspended. And then this will be the third tournament uh, that we'll be hosting uh, for the Women's uh, Cricket World Cup qualifying tournament. Now, some of the teams that we can expect that are going to be coming through Pakistan. Now, we already played them at Harare Sports Club in a couple of matches. It did not end well. And that was good because our women were being exposed to a higher level of cricket. And they learned quite a lot of things. We're also going to see the likes of uh, Sri Lanka. Bangladesh, Thailand, who we are currently in a series with at the present moment, as well as other nations like Papua New Guinea, United States of America, and so on. So congratulations. But here is what is important. The women need preparation time. They need adequate game time. Whether it means us going down to South Africa to go and get some of that game time, uh, putting together series against some of the other weaker nations, however, that will maybe strengthen us that will definitely help. Training facilities have to be uh, put together. Also staying in camp for a while so that we can get the entire women's team to gel. We know that we've got a quality captain in Marianne Musonda. We've got quality players, uh, Sean Myers, Tasman Granger, uh, Josephine Nkomo, uh, Nom Vula, who's been doing really well with the left arm seam. I totally love the way that she goes about her bowling. Experienced players like Modesta Mpachikwa, uh, Precious Marange, all these add quality and steel uh, to the women's side. But they have to gel. They have to play enough cricket. They haven't been playing at the present moment because club cricket for women is not being played. And also international cricket for women is coming few and far between. Here are some of the benefits that could accrue from us hosting this tournament. We could have a better uptake of women's cricket here in Zimbabwe. Something that we've been crying and dying for. We will hope uh, that Zimbabwe cricket can help set up structures from school girl level. I was uh, enthralled one of the days, particularly when Zimbabwe was pretty much open uh, to going to events and watching events. I was watching the under-21 rugby season at Nigel Phillip uh, Field at Churchill High School. And I peeked over the Jura Wall. Uh, Roosevelt 
high school and I saw ladies that were there, they were playing cricket with the barest of resources. They just had a bat, they had stumps and they had a ball. They didn't even have pads. So it shows that there is an enthusiasm to want to play cricket within in the school girl system and it just needs to be set up and put together in order for us to do better. I also think that with this, it will also help for ICC to see that we are serious with our women's cricket. If our women do end up qualifying, because three teams will qualify from here to go through to the World Cup, if our women do qualify, that will also mean that in terms of the amount of money that will come through for women's cricket, or cricket in its entirety can also increase. And we hope that that will be the case when it does happen. So I say good luck to the Lady Chevrons. Wish you the best within this current series against Thailand, but even wish you more success when we do host that tournament, which will be happening uh, from October into November. 21 October to the 5th of November, it will be happening here in Harare. So you can expect the likes of Takashinga Sports Club, Harare Sports Club, as well as all Dararians as well, to be hosting all of the matches when they do take place. So let's now go on a regional uh, scale. Uh, some of the other issues to discuss, and this one is affecting us as well. Confederation of African Football, that's CAF, president, uh, that is uh, Patrice Motsepe, did say that he was going to look towards pushing the women's game to another level. Well, a bombshell announcement came through yesterday after the CAF club licensing senior manager came through to say that a decision has been made. If you are a men's team, you will not be able to participate in the 2022-2023 CAF Champions League season if you do not have a women's side. Fantastic development, right? Hmm. Let's look at it a little bit more. In Zimbabwe, in particular, we boast of women's football. We've seen the mighty warriors. They've done well. They've won the Kosafa tournament. They've even gone to the Women's Africa Cup of Nations on several occasions. But our local football is in shambles. Our club football has not been played for over two years. Nothing seems to be taking place. And this I put out to the Zifa women's uh, chairperson, women's committee chairperson. That's Barbara Chikosi. She's been sitting at the helm and... We're asking, what is going on with our football? The easiest route to the Olympics is through women's football, when it comes to football. The easiest route towards qualifying to the World Cup is through our women, even though our men get most of the resources. Now, if we were to develop women's football, it would go a mighty long way. But this is where also clubs are going to find it very difficult. Because if you're an aspiring champion, then that means you need to have a women's side for it to even make sense. So let's look at the footballing landscape here in Zimbabwe. Of the men's teams that are in the Premier Soccer League, only three, <laughs> only three have got women's football sides that are relatively competitive. That's Ngezi Platinum Stars, Highlanders Football Club, and Black Rhinos Queens. Question in point. Dynamos does not have a women's side. Caps United does not have a women's side. <laughs> FC Platinum doesn't have a women's side. And these all have, you know, taken over trophies. Uh, that is the Premier Soccer League trophies over years. So the question now is, can clubs take on women's teams being incorporated within their system? Well, many of the clubs that I've mentioned, especially the top sides, are struggling to pay their men's teams. And so how will they be able to incorporate a women's team, let alone provide resources for them to be successful? Also, at the same time, does this not also place a demand on the likes of the PSL and Zifa to now work out on how they can incorporate the women's Super League here in Zimbabwe and ensure that the funding is available? Are the resources available? Are the grounds there for them to play uh, their football? Can they play as curtain raisers before Premier League matches? 
These are maybe some of the ideas that the likes of PSL, Zifa, as well as clubs can be tossing around to try and ensure that they can build the women's game. It is a positive development for women's football. But I also feel that CAF is putting pressure on clubs that they clearly know will not be able to deliver, which might end up making the CAF Champions League an elite tournament, which will not allow other men's teams to participate. They know that the finances have not been evenly distributed when it comes to the African continent. We know that Francophone countries, particularly the North and the West, carry most of the money in football here on the African continent. When it comes to Southern African teams, very few can be able to raise our women's sides. We do know there's a Kosafa Women's Champions League qualifying tournament that is going to be played and we've got Black Rhino Queens which will be going down uh, to South Africa for that tournament. And we've seen that the likes of Lesotho, Namibia are, are providing women's teams. But how many can actually be competitive? So this is a big question. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments, particularly from women. What are your thoughts? What more can be done in order to make sure that our women's football goes to the next level when it comes to the African continent? Well, I'm your host, Rumbo Chakureka. We're going to take a short break, but when we do come back, we're going to be talking about international football. I'm wearing my AC Milan jersey because Serie A action begins this weekend. It means Inter Milan begins their quest for another title, maybe a back-to-back -back title without a Romelu Lukaku. Can they succeed? Also, the likes of Juventus will be looking to maybe regain that Serie A title, which they feel that they should not have lost the last season, considering some of the arsenal that they have. We'll catch you on the other side. Well, you can either say it is driven by the lion or it can be driven by somebody else this time around because Romelu Lukaku is not there. City R season is kicking off this weekend and all the big teams are in action. Juventus, Inter Milan, AC Milan, all of them will be vying for Champions League places. Now, Inter Milan will begin life without Romelu Lukaku and we'll hope that the likes of Eden Zeko, who they have signed, will be able to take them to another level. As for Juventus, they've made a good signing. Manuel Locatelli uh, joining just a couple of days ago, uh, coming through from Atalanta. So they're adding a little bit of steel to their side. It's going to be interesting to see whether Juventus or Inter Milan can take the title. But AC Milan had a really good finish last season. Uh, and Definitely Zlatan Ibrahimovic, who was really scoring the goals for them, was unable uh, to, to finish off the season because of an injury. But they are a side with a bucket load of potential. And they have signed some interesting people with a deal pretty close uh, coming through of Timio Bakayoko. He seems to have revived himself at AC Milan, as well as the signing of Fikayo uh, Mori from Chelsea, who I believe is a perfect uh, defender uh, for Inter Milan to sign. So I think uh, they, those are going to be three that are going to be right up there. But who knows the surprise that Jose Mourinho will bring with his AS Roma side. Now already they began life uh, with a win against uh, Trabon Son Spore, and that is within the Europa League qualifiers and so on. So let's see how a AS Roma will do uh, in there and they will be beginning life as well without Eden Zeko. So uh, make sure that you stay locked on to Sports Extra as we also analyze that and bring in experts to deal with all of those things. So anyway, the Sports Extra Fantasy Football League is live and kicking. We did mention at the top of the show, 200 US dollars up for grabs for whoever wins the Fantasy Football League for Sports Extra. So if you're number one, you're gonna get the 200 US dollars. So far, we've got 94 participants keep on coming in the link you can find it on our facebook page it is one of our pinned posts in fact the only pinned post uh, right at the top of the page 
you will find the link there. You can join the, the, the league and you should be able to win that if you are competitive enough. So let's take a look at the current log standings. So everybody else had a fantastic start. Do not ask me what number I am in the league. I had a horrible, horrible start, but I'm sure I'm going to catch up and who knows, maybe I might get to the 200 US dollar mark. But in order to try and help you each and every weekend, we have a fantasy football expert that will be coming through and telling you what kind of a setup would be great for you if you want to make the most points. And this week we've got Dennis Ndamba who's going to be giving us his take, his thoughts on what the team of the week should be for your fantasy football team. Hello the Fantasy Premier League managers. My name is Dennis Damba and I'll be taking you through the Fantasy Premier League segment of this episode on Sports Extra where I'll be sharing with you some basic thoughts and ideas on how best you can set up your team for Game Week 2. Now Game Week 1 was just too good for me. I only managed to pick up 51 points which was below average. Um, but I'm not too sad about it because my closest rival when it comes to Fantasy Premier League, Mr. Rainbow himself, scored less than I did. But I do hope to turn my luck around and get more points for, from Game Week 2. And to that effect, I've employed certain strategies which I'll be sharing with you. Okay, so let's get into it. Let's start with defense and goalkeepers. Now, for this part of the team, you want to get players or you want to source your players from teams that are most likely going to get clean sheets this coming week or even in the uh, coming weeks throughout the season. And um, you want to choose players from those teams that have got sound defensive uh, strategies and structures. You want to get players from teams that are facing uh, less threatening oppositions this coming week. And so for me in goal, I've got um, Alison Baker from Liverpool, Liverpool, which is facing Burnley this coming weekend. Burnley is not much of a threat. And um, there are also other good options for uh, your goalkeeper. You might want to go with Mendy from Chelsea, which has got a great defensive structure. You might want to also go for Ederson of Man City, which is facing Norwich City, which is not much of a formidable four for them. Um, and there's also Martinez, Aston Villa. I still consider him to be one of the good options for goalkeepers for your team. So you might want to go with him uh, for this week or even for the long run. He might pick up uh, clean sheets that will score you points uh, this season. Um, defensively, I've gone with Rudiger as my CD from Chelsea and I've gone with Ailing and Luke Shaw. I decided to go with two full bags and um, the benefit of fullbacks is that they can produce assists which will score you more points in your team. But um, also, uh, there are also great options in terms of defenders that you can pick up from. Uh, you've got Zoma, Chilwell, Van Dijk, Gomez, uh, Diaz and Stones. I believe they will be starting this weekend. I'm sure Pep Guardiola will not make the same mistake of selecting RK uh, over these, gu these guys. Uh, Maguire, Lindelof. Uh, Varan and there's also those guys with aerial presence who can head the ball into the back of the net off of corners and off of free kicks. You know, I'm talking about Dank from Brighton and Hove of Albion. Those are also great options. Yeri Nina from Everton, Tyron Mings uh, from Aston Villa. But Tyron Mings, you might not want to pick him because he picks up a lot of yellow cards, although he gets clean sheets, but he picks up a lot of yellow cards. He's not very disciplined in that manner. And um, yeah, you've also got your fullbacks that can give you points in terms of uh, getting assists. Uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold and Andrew Robertson, the deadly fullbacks of Liverpool. Luke Shaw on the left, who I have on my team, can whip in those crosses, can even score himself. Marcos Alonso from Chelsea. Um, Benjamin Mendy from Manchester City. I do believe Pep Guardiola is gaining a bit of confidence in Benjamin Mendy, Luke Ailey, who I have in my team from Leeds United, those are also good fullbacks to consider, and people like Lucas Digne of Everton. Uh, now let's talk about midfield. This is where you really should cash in on. This is where most points should come from, and this is where 
most of your investment and, and your focus should be directed. So for my team, I've got Salah, Jota, Pogba, Fernandez, and Rafinha. And Salah is my captain. I do believe that he can pick up uh, assists, they can score goals and uh, get me those points. And since he's captain, those points will be doubled. But there are also great options uh, in terms of midfield. There's just so much quality in the Premier League this season. Uh, you've got the likes of De Bruyne, you've got Pulisic, Jungmann Son, Mason Mount, Grealish, Shalom, but just to mention a few, Evan Smith Rowe, uh, he put up a good performance last week, although they lost to Brentford, but he can pick up an assist, he can pick up a goal this coming weekend, who knows, but I do consider him as a good option. Now moving on to forwards, you want finishes, natural born finishes, people who don't waste chances, um, there's Lukaku. Lukaku is now back in the Premier League. He's a very good option. I do believe he might have instant impact for Chelsea, so he's uh, a great option to select from. But I haven't selected him for my team because I really wanted to focus on my midfield. So for my team, I have got Troy Deeney of Watford and I've got Miguel Antonio. Um, they are also great finishers. Uh, Jamie Vardy, you saw him finishing. Last uh, last time around, Richarlison won a gold medal in the Olympics. Firmino, Danny Ings, just to mention a few. So there are so many options. All you have to do is to really strategize and work around your budget and make sure that you get those points. And um, I don't know if you've played your cards uh, already, but um, I've already played my favorite. So. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to benefit from that. But that's all I have for you today. I wish you all the best in Game Week 2. And um, I would also like to let you know that we've got a Fantasy Premier League, um, league, uh, Sports Extra League that you can join. And uh, you might want to join, join that league because there's a price at the end of the season for whoever comes out first. So you don't want to miss out on that. So a great big thank you to Dennis Ndamba there for giving us his uh, fantasy football team of the week. I don't know if it's going to fire, but hey, who knows what happens on the field of play. We'll be looking towards the Premier League and what will happen in that regard. So which team are we featuring for the week? Well, it is uh, going to be Arsenal versus Chelsea, the N London derby. It's North versus West, and I think the nightmare continues to get bad for Mikel Arteta because the pressure for him to succeed will continuously mount. Now, are Arsenal a bad side? I don't think they're entirely a bad side, but they've got serious issues, particularly in their centre-back pairing. Uh, they bought Gabriel last season. He showed some shimmy of brilliance, but and then he also showed some serious signs of being penetrated. Ben White didn't have the best of games particularly against Brentford, where they lost by two goals to nil, being culpable, particularly in the second goal that went in through a long throw. So they will need to come together and make things happen in that central part of defense. They've also got issues within their midfield, where right now, well, when you've got a granite Xhaka to try and create everything for you, we saw what he could do, particularly in the Euro 2020 uh, tournament. Uh, he is... He has got some quality in him, but I also don't think it's the kind of individual that can take Arsenal to the kinds of places that they want to be in. That is Europa League as well as Champions League finishing places. Their front row has also been struggling for goals with only Emil Smith Rowe, Bukayo Saka offering any form of respite. But their senior men, Alexander Lacazette, uh, Pierre-Marie Aubameyang in particular as the captain, has really been struggling. Not sure if it's just a mental block and already there are rumors that Barcelona would be interested in his services. So let's see what will happen in that regard. But I think Arsenal surely can come together. There's a little bit of light with the likes of uh, Gabriel Martinelli, the likes of Nicolas Pepe. They offer some spark in that um, uh, Arsenal side and maybe if they can also come together that will help in the move for Arsenal to become a better team. For Chelsea, I don't think any more can be said. Romelu Lukaku is waiting to make his second debut for Chelsea. He was once a Chelsea player and now he's gone out. He's proven himself as a striker. He comes right into it. So, 
They've also got the question, where does Timo Werner go? He was given the responsibility to score goals. He didn't do that last season. Well, he didn't score much, but he needs to be scoring more consistently. So I would think that they are going to push him out to the left and uh, maybe try and see if they can have someone coming through on the right, either a Hakim Ziyech or even the likes of a Christian Pulisic. And then just behind them, maybe a Mason Mount might also come through. And Golo Kante and Jorginho uh, completing that midfield three. Then also, you'll be looking at their defense. Andreas Christ uh, Christensen has really stepped up uh, to the plate alongside the likes of Thiago Silva whose experience has been immense for Chelsea and led them to that Champions League title. When it comes to right-back and left-back positions, they are spoiled for choice, even to the point of sending Emerson Palmieri on loan. <laughs> sending him on loan to Olympic Lyon. And that was a deal that was completed yesterday. So Chelsea should be outright favourites to win this one. I would give Chelsea a maybe a 2-1 victory considering that it's a derby, and when it's a derby, you just never know who comes to the party. Now, the other likes of Manchester City will be facing Norwich, and then you've got Liverpool taking on Burnley. You've also got Manchester United, who started off in fantastic form, who will be making their trip to St. Mary's, and that will be playing against Southampton. So those are some of the major, uh, uh, major matches that will be taking place over the weekend. When it comes to the French League, well, we've got uh, Brest uh, that will be playing host to Paris Saint-Germain, whilst Olympique Lyon will be looking to somehow, way, get their uh, campaign off to a start because right now they don't have a victory and it seems like things might be imploding at Tinoka Dewere's team, whilst also at the same time Rem, uh, that is Marshall Munetzi's team, will be in action over the weekend. The DSTV Premiership, that's the South African uh, Premier Soccer League, is also going to be kicking off this evening as Mamelodi Sundowns, who are the defending champions, will be taking on Benny McCarthy's Amazulu. And that should be good uh, for, for our eyes to feast on, particularly today. And then on Saturday and Sunday, we'll see the likes of Kaiser Chiefs and Orlando Pirates also coming through and playing their football. So my name is Rimbo Chakureka. The weekend has definitely come and I now have to go. But don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe, to comment on our Facebook and Instagram handle. That is at Sports Extra Zim. The extra is without an E. And of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's Sports Extra ZW for all of the content that will be sharing. Stay locked on. But as for now and until we see you next week, cheerio.